Now what's all this stuff about? Welcome to my little um, mini video about sit kick. Um, the new sit drop-in replacement that you can put into your Commodore 64 or Commodore 128 to replace the original sit chip with an emulation that uses a Teensy 4.1 to um, bring you a realistic SID chip sound emulation using open source projects like FM OPL and Resid to get the sound right. If you want to find out more about SIDKIC, visit the GitHub project page. You can use the codes that I put in this in the lower left corner of this video, or you can also use the URL that I will put under the video to click on to get to the GitHub project page. It's all open source. It's um, open hardware and open software, so you can order your own PCBs. I have um, PCBs of the Revision 02 that I use at the moment. Um, I have two PCBs of that. Um, I'm happy to be a beta tester for this project. On GitHub you can already find Revision 03. Um, for this video I'm still using Revision 02 basically because I don't own an O3. So all I want to do is show you this PCB in close-up because somebody on Forum64 asked for advice on what parts to use for the sockets and pin headers and um, although I don't have the perfect solution I just want to show how I did it with this um, PCB here. I might do it differently in the future, but um, this works nicely at the moment, so just want to give a little overview on um, what I used and in which order I put it on. So the basic order is first put on all SMD parts, including the 74LC245 chips, which you need three of, one, two, and three and once all the SMD components are on then go for the big clumsy parts and I think best thing is to start with the lower end if I remember it correctly solder this these two um, pin headers in and once that is done go for the big stuff uh, on top but this order might de really depend on what parts you have um, you want to use. So I used um, two of these sockets um, to get a socket where I can plug in the Teensy. For this Teensy, which uh, I already had soldered the legs on it to onto it, and it's um, not uh, these are not rounded pins. That's not perfect, but it still does the trick. Um, for the next time I would use rounded pins, especially as I use those um, sockets here, which um, go much better with rounded pins. And here the one challenge is that you can't um, leave the all those be uh, stabil stabilizing beams, stabilizing beams in here. You have to break some of them out, as you can see here from my brutal attempts to remove those. Um, they would clash space-wise with those chips here, and this would clash with those pin headers. But you can, I was able to still leave this one in here, this beam because the solar jumper here I can still get to it with a with the tip of my soldering iron yeah and um, that's basically what I wanted to show I know there are many many open questions but this can be discussed in another video so I'm really excited about this Sidkick project and I can really recommend it I've sold two of them now. I have one in my Commodore 64 and one in my Commodore
Commodore 128 and it's a lot of fun especially as it emulates two of these ch SID chips um, at once plus the FMOPL Yamaha um, sound chip which is a lot of fun to put together and there are still more hidden features that really hardly anybody has talked about which are already built into the software but uh, this is not um, part of this video so thank you for your time and have fun bye